Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another One Hour Rebellion. It's been a little while. Uh, it's been harder to film because, uh, honestly, the Bachelorette season is over. And uh, Lady Wombat has uh, finally found a new show. Uh, Love is Blind, I believe, is what we're watching now at the moment. So, able to get a little more recording in here. So I am playing my friend Grant, as you can see in the top right hand corner here. Um, thanks to some other advice, I've turned off the side menus, so I think viewing will be a little bit nicer here on this video. Let me know in the comments if it uh, looks good. Doing a little bit of a standard deployment here. We got the Death Star on Coruscant. I've got a, a Star Destroyer AC in Salakami or Salukami, and also in Rhodia, and then one in Celust as well. Now, I might rotate this around a little bit here, it looks like, but the general idea being I can subjugate Naboo and Bothawe for sure, and then probably also uh, Kashyyyk and possibly Ord as well. So I've got some flexibility by doing it this way. I debated on putting the Death Star out in Celeste, and uh, what I ended up doing is leaving the Star Destroyer there, because I like the idea of sending the Assault Carrier to Mustafar and Bespin, keeping the Star Destroyer available for Kato. Um, I've also got a Loyal Corellia, which is nice. Sometimes with a Loyal Corellia, you have to worry about the Rebels starting in, you know, Kato and then going for an early attack and blockade there, but... With having a nice uh, Imperial force next to it, I think that's kind of a kind of a minimal idea. And for all the rookies watching, um, if there are any here, looking for some Imperial tips, and it looks like Grant's going for Alderaan here, looking for any Imperial tips, um, you know, it's really important to minimize Rebel production because the more ships the Rebels have and the more troops the Rebels have, the easier it is to score objectives, and that's how the game ends. Um, so we've got a droid coming out. So Mothma's going to be on 3PO, which what that means is there probably won't be an ability to block on Utapau. And I've got Mahdi here, but a little bit of a challenge because of where the Rebels are starting. Um, I can't place Mahdi in Mandalore, and I can't place him in Corellia because he's going to be victim to whatever that initial rebel attack is. I suppose I could have put Mahdi and Tarkin in Mandalore and forced him to attack Mandalore and leave Coruscant alone, but I don't like that idea very much. Um, Here's a fun trick. If Mothma was not on 3PO and you draw first turn subversion, throwing the Emperor on subversion is a good strategy, um, as long as there's no rebel troops in Utapau, because um, Leia will likely stay back to block whatever the em Emperor is on. So not likely to send Leia to Utapau before Mothma. And then if Mothma tries to take it over, She's rolling three dice, and the Emperor's rolling three plus one for subversion, and you went on ties. So I really like playing the Emperor if there's no troops in Utapau on subversion. So, okay, you can see Grant with Leia is going for the blockade on Mandalore. Um, the Rebels are doing a pretty common tactic here, which is to attack and then immediately withdraw your troops with the retreat card from, um, from Alderaan. And because they're going back to Alderaan, which they can do because they left a ship there, if they hadn't left a ship there, they would have had to retreat to Kashyyyk. But because they're going back to Alderaan, you have to count the number of units there and be worried about threatening the core. So I don't know about that play there. There's only four troops in Alderaan. So I'll just go about my business here. Subjugate Bothawi. You don't want a rebel player to have speeders. Um, you know, and then I'll subjugate Naboo with Tarkin. So that prevents them from building. Now, never subjugate Naboo in this situation with a assault carrier 
because if the rebels build alliance in Utapau, then they can put a Y-wing in Utapau and attack the assault carrier. All right, Mothma's going to build alliance here, and because she's got 3PO, there's no point in wasting the subversion on there. So the Emperor is just going to go back and um, subjugate Kashyyyk, block their production there. And again, same similar rule, you don't want to leave an assault carrier facing Mon Cal on its own because of a potential hit and run. And now, because I've kept Vader back, I have a choice. I can either block the sabotage from Riken, or I can save Vader to attack either Alderan or gain loyal or subjugate Ord and get an assault carrier. In this case, I decide I'd rather try to block the sabotage, which I do, just barely. So sometimes I like to think, well, okay, if Vader was on a mission and that mission was to build a Star Destroyer, would I do it? The answer's probably yes. So it seems like blocking the sabotage was a good idea there. Anyway, um, let's see what we've got for heroes here. I don't like an early job of the hut um, with bounty. I value the movement. And then my general rule of thumb is if I don't have a three eyeball leader to take a three eyeball leader, that is amplified by the fact that I have secure the plans in my hand and that's Krennic's card. So I have two choices for the secret facility here. I can pick Toydaria or I can pick Utapau. And I pick Toydaria because if I can trick the rebels into building an alliance in Toydaria, then I can just use that card and subjugate it. I don't need to move a troop there. Utapau would not have been a bad pick either because that's one of the systems that the rebels tend to try to free early. All right, now I gotta place some units. So I need to put some stuff in Coruscant. I need to put some stuff nearby the rebels to be able to attack them as well. So I'll put one tank in Kashyyyk and then one uh, tank and a troop down in Karelia. See what the rebels decide to do here. They have picked up Maydeen for a leader. So anytime a rebel picks up Maydeen, you need to think about his action card, which is to destroy three ground units, uh, or three health worth of ground units, which can be a shield bunker, an ATST and a troop, or a walker. Um, he doesn't use that ability here. That's a super powerful ability to save to make like a Death Star run. To blood, like you could uh, you could use Maydeen to take out one shield bunker, and you could open with a sabotage to take out another, and then apply the assault. Um, I have some choices here. I drew Tarkin's card, and normally I like to play that during loyalty turns, but I also want to drive. I, I, I'm also playing somebody who tends to keep Leia back to block. So I think there's a potential to lure out Leia with Tarkin's mission, or with the Emperor's mission, and then sneak Tarkin's mission through after that. So we're just going to see how this goes. All right, Rebels opening with an infiltrate. I've got two missions. i got to try to pull Leia out. Um, I'm going to start by killing rebel troops, and we're going to start by getting out of Kashyyyk to try to minimize the chance of getting Wookiee Uprising done. Then we're going to attack the speeder in a troop here. Um, I'm going to lose some things here for sure, because um, we're going to get tow cabled and probably lose the at, -AT. However, I can do some damage with... Uh, I should play... Well, I guess I'm not. I'm going to flip the combat. And then that'll allow me a chance to roll heals, I suppose, if he does some extra damage here. I think the better idea would have just been to do damage. If I had done damage, the speeder would be dead now. And then so would the troop. But, um, yeah, that was a pretty unfortunate roll. Okay, so yeah, definitely, if, okay, here's the thing. If you think the combat is going to last multiple turns, flipping the combat is a good thing to do. If you don't think the combat's going to last multiple turns, generally doing damage is effective. Now, sometimes that backfires, but it's all right. 
I think my idea was I'll flip the combat so the speeder can't heal itself, but it's only rolling one dice and no re-roll, so... Um, anyway, the second item I did was the ATST card, um, which did take out the speeder, but I also lost all my units as well. So, um, now I am left in Mandalore with no troops underneath me, but no rebel troops blockading. So if the rebels wanted to, well, they can't because they don't have any more movement left. So, um, instead, what happened is the rebels moved to, I skipped a movement here, the rebels moved to Kashyyyk and then to safety in Kashyyyk to get away from the Death Star. And then Vader moved to Utapau to subjugate. The base was not on Utapau. And then the Emperor is now ruling by fear. Um, he's doing that. Uh, that was the plan to hopefully draw Leia out, but she didn't need to be drawn out, so I probably overthought everything. Now I can also play Tarkin there as well and gain loyalty in Utapau this turn, which will be nice. Mothma's going to build alliance in Megiddo. That's a relatively safe place to build alliance, and it does force my hand to have to move to Ord. Um, and then you'll see Riken is not on Sabotage, because um, that was played on Naboo. So it could mean he's on Contingency Plan is probably the most likely thing here. Um, or maybe Rapid. Although if it was Rapid, I feel like he would have already played Rapid here. Um, oh, nope, we're doing uh, Behind Enemy Lines. So we're playing the rote deck. I should have uh, paid attention to that earlier. So Behind Enemy Lines is a super powerful rote card, and it's one of the main reasons why you want to leave a big rebel contingency in base. Now, he could go after Tag, but he no longer has tow cables. So he's got not as strong of an attack as he would normally. Now, I don't have um, Overrun, which means I'm a little bit light in the combat cards as well. So Grant takes his time to think about what the right move here to do is. Um, you know, Bothui is a nice target. Um, if you can take out Bothui, my middle of the board presence is pretty much done. He could go after Tag with a confrontation, although that would be a little bit tricky to pull off. Um, he could go to Seleucami to clear out the ground units and to try for the Star Destroyer, which looks like he's going to do. Now, I have no leader to bring in this particular moment. Should have thought about this a little better. This is a risky attack for him, though. Um, even though a Star Destroyer only has four hit points, I do have Overwhelming Presence, so I can block two red hits. So you have to assume that they're going to bombing run. And then I'll block two hits, yep. So he's got a roll. Um, I'll block two red hits. So he's got to roll two criticals, and then I need to roll no heals, and he's only got one reroll. So he rolls one critical, my blocks don't do anything, and he does take out both my TIE Fighters. Okay, I heal a TIE Fighter, do two damage, probably to the Corvette, yeah, kill the Corvette. It's either the Corvette or all three of the troops, or all three of the Starfighters. And the Corvette's got red damage, and the Starfighters have black damage. So taking the Corvette and the Y-Wing is the right move. Then if he stays, I have, you know, I have Swarm Tactics. I can play that for one damage, plus the TIE Fighter could take out the other unit as well. I don't love that, um, you know, the Star Destroyer is pretty crippled, but... It is what it is. All right. He's rolling for a speeder here. And after flipping the combat, I'll do a bunch of damage to the speeder. He will not do enough to take my guy down. Okay, he's got an ion cannon because he's got to take down that Star Destroyer. And then he's going to have another red dice to roll. And I just need to do damage to the Starfighters here. Okay, so he's got three or four. I don't think I healed last round. Maybe I did. I think I've got four damage on it. Now I've got five. One on the fighter. No heals. All right, but I did take out the second starfighter. 
So his fleet and my fleet are decimated. I'm left with a unit there. It does stink having a Star Destroyer taken down and not having much presence in that corner of the board. But, yep, and there's his Rebel Assault. So, um, you know, was that a good trade for him? I don't know. Um, behind enemy lines is a tough card to have to decide to play because it really drains the base. You can see now his base has just got a couple of troops in it. Um, Grant knows that I tend to play a aggressive limit your unit sort of strategy. Um, I had two options here. I could have played it where the Death Star is in order to remove the loyalty from my Guido, but I'm likely going to move there with the Death Star next. So instead I play it on Utapau, remove the loyalty uh, or add Imperial Loyalty to Utapau on top of the Rule by Fear to switch it to Imperial. I think I removed the Loyalty from Nebu as well. All right, Endor is a really nice draw here. Um, Endor is one of my weak regions, which is why that Star Destroyer and that Assault Carrier have not moved. Um, you know, intermediate, so, so beginner level um, Imperial play just subjugate places and kill rebel units intermediate level imperial play don't don't overcommit your troops and what i mean by that if you stick a star destroyer in the corner of the map let's say you go from you know to bespin and then to endor and then you later on draw an endor probe and you need to get that star destroyer back up to dagobah or something it's a multi-level move to be able to do that so if you can keep your troops in a central position where you're threatening to subjugate rebel loyal positions to prevent their production, keeping your units gathered together is safe. It's almost impossible to prevent a Star Destroyer from going to Utapau because it's that important to take, but otherwise, you know, um, try to keep your Star Destroyer central. So Lukami was a good spot for one. It's not there anymore, obviously. You can let your assault carriers kind of go around on edge. All right, what do we do? So we have an assault carrier in Mandalore. We have a problem in um, in Moncal because I cannot, I don't have Tarkin's card or a Star Destroyer there anymore. I have a Death Star that's going to wander on top of an of a rebel location, which that's always a risk for behind enemy lines or playing the assault, and it's hard to flip that to loyal. Um, so, you know, some difficult choices. Now, I drew Ozl um, with proceeding as planned, and I, I, I chose Ozl specifically because it threatens the idea that I've got um, catch them by surprise, but I also don't want to wait because I've recently lost a Star Destroyer, so I'm just going to put a super on the map. Ozzel's a nice one to take compared to Jer Gerard, not just because of the extra navy uh, dice, but also um, because of his probe draw card, if that happens to come up. Uh, his action card is a lot stronger than Jer Gerard's card, I, in my opinion. Okay. Rebels using the last of their fleet to attack. I'm pretty happy about this, and I think in another world, I probably send a leader. I'm not really sure why I'm not here. You know, the idea is, is in theory, I should be able to take that group out, but, you know, I think having the rerolls would be real nice to make sure I, I take him out, because he's not building much this turn. You know, I don't know. It's all right. So he puts another unit down on the map. Um, I blocked two black hits, so that doesn't actually do any damage to me. And then I do two damage in return. Um, and it's correct to kill both of those fighters, because that forces the transport to retreat. But boy, I would have liked to have that transport too. Alright, then I can uh, do a damage to one of these three uh, guys on here, which is the right thing to do and then use my next damage card next turn, probably. Okay, he's going to say no healing. Now, I am rolling two red dice in a wild, so no healing is a nice card, because if he happens to roll a crit, I can't heal it. But Leia had a pretty rough roll there. No hits. 
Okay, then I need two back, and I got two back to wipe those units. Okay, that ended up working out pretty well for me. Now the transport has to flee back to Kashik. I gained a TIE fighter there, and I didn't lose any units. In exchange, I also wiped his force, so that felt pretty good. Now, I think he did that move to try to prevent that group maybe from going to Kashyyyk and then the other one to, to Megiddo. I'm not, I'm not too sure. Um, maybe defense would have been a better spot there. Uh, Vader runs Hunt Them Down, which is what I was planning to do if he didn't open an attack. Um, and that ends up working for taking out that transport. So now there's no rebel units on the map. There's three rebel units in the base. So that was a very aggressive rebel strategy. Now he is going to deploy a Mon Cal. Um, and I did not put the Emperor on subversion again because of Mothma and her card. I didn't feel like it was worth it just to get rid of 3PO. He's going to sabotage. Seleucami, which prevents me from building there, so it's going to be a little bit tough to get to Moncal. There's not going to be a way to prevent that second Moncal from getting on queue. Uh, so I'll just go about my business. We'll get the Star Destroyer to Geonosis with the idea that it could go to Ryloth if I don't draw that probe card, or it could go to Tatooine if I do. Um, I'm going to leave a troop and a TIE fighter on Utapau. I usually over garrison Utapau by a little bit, um, just in case, you know, some rebel shenanigans there. Um, I like leaving air and ground. If I'm playing the base deck, I almost always leave an ATST, um, but should probably even leave one against Rote just to prevent assault from stepping in. All right, my R&D had two overseas projects, and I don't love that when I'm not building a lot of Star Destroyers. So I guess it'll be all right here because I'll get two more Star Destroyers on the map probably. Yeah, we'll see how that plays out. All right, because I didn't send any leaders um, to that assault carrier when it was attacked, I can send everything to Felucia. Can't send it to Seleucami because it's sabotage, but I can send it to Felucia. And then not a whole lot he could have done about that. I do have a Star Destroyer on the queue as well, so I will likely deploy both to, or the Star Destroyer to stack on top of that Assault Carrier because I really want to ping that that guy down. Okay, the worst card in the game, well, maybe not as bad as Interrogation, but an Assault is coming up. Um, he's going to try to assault my Stormtroopers in Ord and doesn't do so very successfully. All right, since I didn't um, subjugate Kashik, I will go ahead and flip Toydaria. That gets me an Assault Carrier out of the build, so that's a nice use of that card. And then I can either move towards Kashik, which is a little bit risky, or I can move away from Kashik and, and potentially move over my Gido. Um, I think the correct move here is not Mustafar. I think the correct move here is Death Star to Megiddo. I'm a little bit worried. I don't know why. Um, <laughs> if I if I put the Death Star in my Guido, then he can't build directly next to the Death Star, which I think would be the correct move to do. But anyway, I wanted to get um, I wanted to get that bottom right corner region, that southeast region, handled. So we'll see. All right, two more good probe draw. Well, at least one good probe draw here in Nalhada. Another one in Bothawi. Um, and then Rebel Cell being dropped now too in Moncal. Now I'm not too worried about that Rebel Cell at this point because I can deploy and I have that Star Destroyer there. Again, that's the Star Destroyer that Vader built. So that ended up being a pretty valuable block. If I don't have that Star Destroyer here, the play for the Rebels is to just defend Moncal with a Navy and then attack out first move, wipe the Assault Carrier, and then even if you lose the Mon Cal in that fight, um, then I'm not getting the Rebel Cell and I'm not getting... Um, yeah, anyway. 
you get the idea. So he's going to deploy a Y wing and a Moncal in Moncal. Two dudes in, oh, nope, and then a Starfighter and a Nebulon in the base. Which could take out a Death Star potentially. I don't know about that. Two troops into Kashik. And does he put a Star Destroyer in Magito? I don't, I don't think so. Hmm. Excuse me, late at night when we're filming here. Drinking some green tea tonight. Try to keep me awake and get this going. It's been a couple of weeks overdue. All right, one in Mandalore, two in Mandalore to make sure it just can't be flipped with the build alliance and flipped to neutral. Um, I'm gonna reinforce the core a little bit because if I move the Death Star away, I need to make sure the core doesn't just collapse and then I lose. Um, building some units in Geonosis. And again, let's take a look at our central position Star Destroyers. We have two central on the right hand side and a Death Star, a sort of centrally located Star Destroyer on the left hand side. Feel pretty good about that. Um, I have some ACs in the middle. And I forgot about Maydeen's card, but honestly, it didn't make much of a difference. I needed to deploy that Star Destroyer there, so I could only get one extra ground there anyway. So. Rebel Cell, a little bit of a nightmare, but is what it is. I can at least uh, take out that Moncal, or it can try to take me out or whatever it wants to do, I suppose. Leia's back, so I don't imagine it's attacking. All right, no planetary assault though, so no easy way to get to that Rebel Cell, so I'm gonna have to do it the old fashioned way here. So we've got a Rule by Fear queued up. So we'll do that with Vader, move in with the Emperor, take out the space, roll by fear with Vader, flip it neutral. I don't know. Should have saved the hunt them down, I guess. Maybe I'll draw into planetary. I could also rule by fear and then remove the sabotage off of Seleucami if I needed to. Or I could leave a TIE fighter and then roll by fear down there. Oh, and we have a safe haven. All right safe haven this is an interesting play here because if that goes through he'll deliver another mon cal to the queue and then it's two mon cals against um the imperial navy which i think i still make that attack to be honest but i think i have to try to block it if i try to block it with the emperor and it doesn't work then i can defeat the mon cals in detail instead of um having to try to get lucky and take them both out here. My super's still a little bit far away and that rebel cell is gonna be a nightmare. So I'm pretty sure I decide to block it. Yeah, that's what I do. All right. The other thing I can do is when the emperor is there, I can move in with tag and then use tag's card to draw cards. So that'd be pretty good. We'll see if I block it. I roll zero. Okay. Mon Cal's going out. I don't, I don't love it, but I mean, it is what it is. I do have the Emperor's card for combat. Um, so then I'm, I'm briefly looking through the cards here and thinking, well, what could I use? I do have Imposing Presence there, which I'll probably need. And Leia's only rolling one dice for defense. So we'll do it. We'll bring the Emperor in tag. Um, this is a major fight. I'll be rolling four black dice, three red dice, and a green. He'll be rolling three black dice and four red dice. However, with the Emperor's card, he'll actually be rolling less than that if I decide to play it. I'll take my Assault Carrier card, my TIE Fighter card, and Imposing Presence. And the TIE Fighter card is nice because I can open with two damage. And I briefly think about leaving one behind. He cannot retreat here because even though there's no space in... Seleucami, um, there is an Imperial unit, so there's no legal place for him to retreat to. So I'll pull all my space cards back. I've got the Emperor here. I play the Emperor's action card. He's going to roll one black and three red. Do not play Imposing Presence here because he's already down a red dice. All right, we'll play the TIE Fighter card. That's the right one. Do two damage to a Mon Cal. Now he can still block two red hits, but two crits will go through that. Um, and now he's also low on other cards to play. He doesn't have the Y-Wing card, he doesn't have Ion Cannon. 
Um, he probably should play no card next round. Yep, no card next round. And that prevents me from playing Imposing Presence next. So two crits here would be really nice. I roll two heals and one black. Okay. Um, yeah, you got to roll the green dice here. Now rolling a, a hit with the green dice is more likely than th rolling three red hits. Okay, I do one more damage to the Mon Cal, so it's got three on there. And then I've got no card next turn. All right, he's got two back. Two back. Take out the Assault Carrier. The Striker's still alive, which is nice. Then I have no card. I'm not going to retreat because I need, I need this victory here. Very important fight. Um... Oh, and he had the X-Wing card to do a damage, so I did lose the Striker. All right, I'm down to two reds. I roll two blanks. I did hit. Okay, there we go. Three damage. So now the question is how to divvy up the damage here. So we will overkill, overkill a Mon Cal by one. Mm -hmm. Okay. That ended up working out. That was a little, little lucky there. He rolled two hits to heal the X-Wing, too. Okay, three criticals. The Mon Cal's dead. My Star Destroyer's got three hits on it. There's one Mon Cal left. I can play a card this round, but there's a decent chance he rolls a critical, I think. Um, so I have a one-hit point Star Destroyer against a four-hit point Mon Cal. And I think there's just no way I can sit there and do that. If I retreat with the Emperor, I can rule by fear on Corellia, or on Felucia. If I retreat with Tag, it's a little harder for him to sabotage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to retreat with the Emperor over a place that's already sabotaged, and I'm going to hope I can just push the rule by fear through. All right, um, that did not go as well as I wanted. Let's see what we've got coming up here. All right, we've got an infiltrate. That's fine. Rule by fear, unless he's on subversion, there's no way to prevent that. Um, and then because Vader ran the rule by fear, he's not likely going to be able to re-sabotage that. So that went that went poorly. You know, um, <laughs> this is a smart play. Build alliance with Mothma. Five on three, but C-3PO. So maybe I should have tried to pull 3PO off earlier. Doesn't matter. I only roll one dice. Don't even get 3PO broken off there. All right. Well, now I'm not deploying out there anymore either, so that Rebel Cell is going to be difficult to deal with. So I have a choice here. I need to figure out what to do with the Death Star. I can either move it up towards Mandalore and the Rebel Cell, or I can use it to subjugate my Gido. Had I subjugated my Gido last turn, this wouldn't be as difficult of a situation. But that Rebel Cell is going to be a nightmare. So I have to, I feel like I have to move up to Mandalore. Now I'm putting it in the middle, in between Kashyyyk and Maegito. And then we've got Jin with a heist. Okay. A uh, little Imperial tip here. We'll call it a beginner Imperial tip. Now, I always recommend moving the Death Star either with Gerard if you have his action card, which is destroy a ship, or if not, a hero with intel because oftentimes Heist is played on top of the Death Star to draw an objective card. And if it's Jin, you're not really going to block it, but, I mean, Piet gives an okay chance to block a plan, the Assault, or, or a Heist if their main characters aren't on it. So, all right. Got to keep going about business, even though things aren't going your way in one sector, you got to make sure you get the rest of them covered. So covering Bespin... Then we've got a Rapid from the Rebels. And I have a move and an R&D. So Sabotage has not been played yet, so you don't want to R&D. 
and then because the, um, because everything but Hoth is covered in the southeast region here, I am going to go ahead and shift some power more towards the the region, more towards the center, uh, to head up towards Moncal. So I'll shift the Star Destroyer to Cato. Cato is a nice place to make sure the rebels don't catch. They can go through. Uh, we got a sabotage over in Toydaria. Now he's going for the shield bunker, which is kind of an interesting pick. I think I would have gone for the regular sabotage, but maybe not. Um, all right, and then I've got an R&D that I can play to draw something. Now I've got a... Um, interdictor or super laser. I kind of need a super laser. But I also kind of need ships. Um, the reason I didn't take the interdictor is partially because I make bad life decisions, but also because I'm feeling like I might sort of need to gamble a little bit here. I'm feeling like things are starting to get out of control, and I might need to get lucky with just a see what we got for probes. Got Ord and Ilum. That feels pretty good actually. I mean, Ilum was potentially going to be a problem. Dathuin, da or Dantuin is still a problem. And I need to discard some decent cards here because I'm holding too many missions and not enough flexibility to do stuff. There's the risk with taking Ozel is um, I had to pass on probably the best Imperial action card, catch them by surprise and take Gerard. So that was unlikely to happen, but it did. So a good example of why not to take Ozel with that card, even though I said you probably should. Lots of lots of bad decisions being made here. Okay, that's okay though. Bright side is Gerard's got uh, fully operational and that card will help defend the Death Star while I get secure the plans out, which I'm probably going to have to do here pretty soon. Now, I'm not in a huge hurry to secure the plans, or at least I shouldn't be in a huge hurry to secure the, the plans because that rebel cell is safe. Grant, I believe, is less likely to try to do some sort of crazy attack with a Y-Wing and a single Nebulon. Um, so yeah, we'll see. We'll see what to do here. So I've got to check Yavin, Dantooine, Dathomir. That assault carrier might be used for that at some point. We'll see. Um, I have to worry about behind enemy lines. I still have to cover Kashyyyk. I need to watch out for Wookiee Uprising too. Um, although I don't think he has Chewbacca at this point. All right, I am not following my own advice and I'm worrying about securing the plans. I honestly, I'm not, not really sure why. I mean, I, I am gonna move to Hoth this turn and assuming the base is not there, I'll secure the plans there. Um, anyway, all right, we're under attack. I have Piet, but I have his no retreat card. So I think I'm gonna play it and playing no retreat here means his Mon Cal's stuck. Remember, I killed one prior. So now sticking the Mon Cal there means I can walk in with the Death Star and Super Laser the thing to death, which will be nice. All right, I'm going to try to survive around here and make sure I kill these, these fighters if possible. All right, I roll blanks, re-roll all three. One hit for black, two reds, no, one red, one red, one black. Okay, he's got three crits and two reds. The two reds are blocked. Okay, three damage for the Star Destroyer. I've got the Y-Wing. Now I can retreat, and I can retreat to Toydaria, which I think is the right move here. I mean, it's risky. Yeah, I could stay here and kill the fighter. 
which is I think what I'm trying to do. But you have to you have to worry because wedge is there, and if the if the X-wing survives, maybe it takes out the Death Star. But I don't I don't try to kill it. I mean I I don't know what I'm doing. I should be trying to kill that X-wing. <laughs> All right. What I should have done is retreat the Star Destroyer, so I had a Star Destroyer in Toydaria. Eh, maybe not. Maybe not, because maybe I'm thinking that the, the assault carrier needs to go there as well. But at minimum, I should have killed that X-Wing. Yeah, I don't know. Sometimes this game gets in your head and you can't quite think straight. Yeah, okay, there we go. I don't... I don't quite know what happened there. All right, so we've got a X-wing and a Mon Cal. I think the exchange, from what I can see, I, I think I was miscounting the damage that was on the Mon Cal. Maybe that's why I was trying to kill it. Anyway, um, now because they can't retreat, it's a sitting duck for the Star Destroyer, which is nice. And then I can probably get Rebel Cell under control afterwards, and if I can't, I can pop a laser, which I think I discarded? Oh boy. Alright. I probably shouldn't use this game as a good example of anything to do, but we're going to do it. Alright, Gerard coming in. I have Gerard's card, and Wedge is sitting there. So what do you need to kill an X-Wing when Wedge is sitting there? You need three hits on the X-Wing. Okay. They don't have the transport card. Why do you need three hits on the X-Wing? You need three hits on the X-Wing because if they have one in a million, he can roll two heals with his two black dice. Okay. I'm fairly confident I can roll three hits with uh, three black dice, five, four red, and a crit. That's risky, though. I, I probably should have just used Jer Gerard's card to wipe out the X-Wing, if I'm being totally honest, and then laser the Mon Cal. Um, but I, I say in chat, I say I'm going to risk it. All right, I need three hits. Roll one crit, no black. I do have three rerolls, though. I'm not going to keep that heal. I need to roll roll some hits. Two hits. Three hits total. Okay. Three hits on the X-Wing. He cannot heal that. The Mon Cal has got five damage on there. Um, so he can he can save the Mon Cal with, uh, with two heals. And he does not roll two heals. Um, and he has to decide whether or not he wants to kill and roll for Yahtzee or not. Now, he could use one in a million to heal the Mon Cals, but he is not. One in a million, if you're not, I mean, you're probably familiar with it. It's a card that allows you to um, change the dice face to any facing you want. Most of the time it's used for assaulting the Death Star, getting a Starfighter to survive, and then scoring the Death Star plans automatically because um, you can use it to roll a success on a mission if you want to. Sometimes it's used for keeping things alive. Other times it's used for making sure a mission succeeds or a successful defense of a rebel base is another way to do it. Um, if Wedge and, say, Obi-Wan are in a system together in the rebel base and you're fighting a ground battle, you can use one in a million on your ground combat. It's a very flexible card. Even though thematically you think it's only designed for taking out the Death Star, which is its primary focus. All right, quick assessment. Four troops in the base with a shield bunker and two, uh, two ships, one of which is a Nebulon, which can pose a threat to the Death Star, but now I have Gerard, so I should be okay there. Off to Hoth. This is a chance to uh, move with Ozel and then secure the plans with Krennic. Do I need to secure the plans against a Y-Wing and a Nebulon? Probably not. 
but I guess in some ways I'm being very careful with the Death Star and in other ways I'm being totally reckless with it. So we'll just call this a good example of how to do both, I suppose. All right, plans are secure. The rebels have rapid mobilized. Mothma's got some tricks on their sleeve. And you can see the, 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 the rebels are fairly limited in their options here. Oh, I see. I didn't pick Super Laser. I picked Interdictor. I should have picked Super Laser because I could have used that for Moncal too. All right, anyway, um, Sabotage and Bothui seems to make sense. So where could the base be? Yavin, Dathomir, Dantooine, Ryloth, Tatooine, Kessel, Malastare. Um, I don't think I can afford to check any of those right now because I got to kill stuff. So we're going to move to Kashyyyk with the assault carrier. Now I think this is a mistake. I think that assault carrier needs to go to Kessel and the Star Destroyer needs to go to Kashyyyk. I just need to risk Wookiee Uprising. He doesn't have Chewbacca. He's not likely to draw him. And if he did, I guess that's just a Star Destroyer and I have a Super on the way out with two other Star Destroyers. So I think the right move there is with the Star Destroyer, but may maybe not. A lot of, lot of machinery coming out next turn. All right, the Kashyyyk forces are about to go down. I have just cycled my combat cards for ground, which is nice because I have a ground combat coming up. And, oh, Alderaan is a possibility here too. So I didn't want to move that Star Destroyer in case the base is on Alderaan, I think. There is a maybe an outside chance where if he has threaten or uh, take over the core, whatever that is, um, I could do that. Now I play interdictor here. I don't. Again, I don't. I, I I'm <laughs> I'm so used to playing Grant and being down in space combat that I panic and I I just go for space combat cards, which. You know, an interdictor there doesn't really do me any good. I already have air superiority or space superiority. And since I moved out of Toydaria, Nalhada is an easy, easy take for them. That's okay. That's not too bad. He's not deploying too much that's going to cripple me. Um, you can see it's also kind of hard for the rebels to score outside of this rebel cell. So thankfully he's going to get another another round here. Maybe maybe a third because I didn't, I didn't R&D... I didn't build alliance, so we're just gonna go to Nalhada, subjugate. I have the Bothui probe, so I can leave Bothui totally open. There's no plant false leads in the rote deck, which I think is one of its biggest failures as a card set, to be honest. Um, so we'll take Nalhada. That will leave us Kessel with that fleet. I can check Malastare with the Kashyyyk fleet if it doesn't die. I can check Alderaan with the Star Destroyer. I've still got to get to Dagobah, so I've got to deploy something probably in Celeste. Um, and then this Assault Carrier that just went to my Gido. Uh, we're going to roll for an Assault here. That Assault Carrier that just went to my Gido can do the Dantooine Dathomir Yavin run. So I think I have a good plan. It's always important to think about what your movements are going to look like as Empire. Like, it doesn't always work out that way, but it's nice to have a good direction of where to go. And again, my Star Destroyers are still central. I didn't push one to Ryloth. I didn't, you know, push it to Tatooine. Um, they're all in a spot where once I fit in the base, I can react. And eventually you're going to draw some good probes. I mean, Ilum was nice, and here the rebel base is moving. Let's see, where do you think it is? Go ahead and pause and think about it. And here we go. Oh, Dathomir. Very interesting. Okay. I don't know if I would have thought Dathomir. I mean, it could have been on Mon Cal, to tell you the truth, but... Um, hmm. Interesting. Okay, here's one of the things about moving the base, right? 
and, and as a rebel, if you're not running tons of rapids, you're not going to know this. But, but think about it from both perspectives here. Okay, we know they have to have rapided to Dantooine, Yavin, Moncal, Felucia, Ryloth, Tatooine, Dagobah, Malastare. And we know they felt unsafe at Dantooine, even though it was not automatic that I was going to take them over. They had just assaulted and wiped out my units in Megiddo. So the only place I could have checked Dantooine from was Mandalore. So where is a safer feeling place than Dathomir right now to move to? I mean, Yavin is equally as dangerous, so I don't think you move from Dathomir to Yavin. Same with, same with Felucia. I mean, the Death Star is right above Moncal, so I don't think you move to Moncal. I mean, maybe if you think you're going to win the ground combat there and then somehow hold off a super and everything else. Um, you know, Moncal's a possibility. Dantooine's a possibility, but it's not that much better than Dathomir was or is. Um, Dagobah, maybe, but only if I don't build in Celeste or... Um, or Utapau, and then maybe Tatooine Ryloth too. So I think what I should be doing here, I think I should put the Assault Carrier in Ryloth, and then use that to check Tatooine, or I mean I should put it in Geonosis, and then use that to check Tatooine, and then I think I should put a Star Destroyer in Celeste. Yeah, there we go. Oh, okay, that, mm, I don't know about that. No, I should be putting that in Geonosis. The Star Destroyer can check Dagobah. It can also check Malastare. I mean, Alderaan's a possibility, but that doesn't that doesn't feel safe either. And tattooing Ryl oh, that's what it is. I drew Ryloth, so I didn't need both up there. Yep. So I think it's got to be Dantooine, or Ori was trying to buff up. Rebel Cell and just go all in and try to build an extra, extra ground troop there. But he put a Starfighter in there, so he's got space and ground. So I think it has to be Dantooine. I think it has to be Dantooine. See what that fleet does. So my moves here, now super important to make sure not to get too tricky with missions here, even though it feels like you're winning. I can afford to lose a couple of victory points here, or a couple of objective points in exchange for checking things. So I need one in Tat, one in Dagobah. I don't need to check Malastare because I drew that. One in Alderaan, that's three. The Death Star in uh, four. Check Kessel for five. And see they're opening with an attack on Mygito here too. I feel like I almost need to... No, I guess I don't need to send a leader there. Yeah, no reason to send a leader. All right, we got a Nebulon on my Guido With those two, three troops. I guess. I feel like they're just trying to pull me into there with that Super Star Destroyer and stuff. But let's start with go, getting to business, right? So first, let's check Dagobah. Nothing in Dagobah always think about if you were to lose the transport that was directly next to it what is the most devastating thing you could hit i think the answer i don't know dagobah i guess even though i had a star destroyer there I'm pretty sure i misdeployed here um all right second move i need to check tattooing probably maybe castle gonna block three to three Okay, blocked. Um, that makes sense. So he was trying to bring that Moncal out with safe haven to my Guido, and I blocked that. Okay, that really screams Dantooine as a location here. And I get either that or a big bluff. But my moves are almost predetermined. I gotta move the Nel Hutta assault carrier to Kessel, make sure that's a thing. And I just gotta let the rebels do all this stuff. Prepare for battle, that's fine. 
they're gonna pull their I mean even if they pulled their Mon Cal out there I've got the super and the regular I feel like that's something I probably win okay so I gotta check um, gotta check Nell Hutta with or check Kessel with the Nell Hutta fleet check Alderan with the Star Destroyer in Kato I mean, I've got all these moves here for that I'm getting antsy here I'm attacking with only a Star Destroyer because the Mon Cal is not out there. So just a Star Destroyer, but boy, that's a little risky for Return of the Jedi. He's got three ground troops and I've only got two. He's got all his combat cards. Oof, I don't know about that. All right, I'll roll, t I, I did two damage and I'll roll one black dice with a re-roll. Okay, he's gonna roll back. He's got a hit, so my unit dies. And he's got one re-roll for a heal. Ah, brutal. Okay, I got a Star Destroyer over there. I couldn't retreat because I can't afford Return of the Jedi. And here comes Wedge, probably with, uh, probably with uh, plant explosives. Yep, there it is. Plant explosives on the Star Destroyer, or on the uh, ATST. <laughs> oh my goodness! Okay, okay. Gross. I also don't have anything left on Ord to rule by fear. I don't think. Maybe I left a Tie Fighter there. So I can't really afford to block. Yeah, and there's the one, the one in a million. All right, he's going to use that to take out my. Um, my ATST. Okay, so I'm on a clock. He's in Dantooine. I mean, he's got to be in Dantooine. So I think I can afford to not check other places now and just work on getting things back under control. So we're going to go get rid of this rebel cell with the Death Star. Now that also puts me out of scope of getting Dantooine, but I, I, I can't keep letting him score objectives. He's already plus one on the rebel cell. By plus one, I mean Rebel Cell is not worth anything on its own. Discarding Long War is worth something. Discarding, uh, I mean, just so he's got two points on that. Medine with uh, Infiltrate. Medine Infiltrating means we've got Recon on Sabotage, and I've got too much stuff there and no R&D. So that's not going to be pretty. Okay, I'm still, I'm still moving. It's not... It's not ideal here. And here comes the sabotage. Okay, sabotage on Mandalore. We got two moves left. I imagine I'll go to Alderaan. And then after that point, the only spots left are Felucia and Yavin and Dantooine. He's he's pushing hard that it's Dantooine, but I guess I, I don't know that for sure, so we'll just keep getting stuff closer. Move the Star Destroyer to Alderaan, and then I imagine move Kashyyyk to Mandalore. I need some, some ground troop representation there. Man, I almost should have let him pull that Mon Cal down and then just taken that out. Brought the ATST to that ground fight. All right, I got Jin running. What's she running? Oh, all right, fair enough. Yeah, move just about everything to. I think I gotta keep Kashyyyk covered and leave the tank there. Even though both assaults are gone, I should probably bring the tank. Leave the troop. I guess they could recon an assault. That would be weird. Um. If you saw, uh, what did Jin do? Hmm. All right, anyway, building an alliance in Felucia, um, hanging out, and then that's the end of the turn. Okay, did Jin recon? Why can't I see? I'm getting old in my old age here. My wombat eyes are. Are fading. All right. So what do we do here? Um, 
Okay, Dagobah was drawn. I didn't need to move my unit there, I guess. My Star Destroyer in Celeste is way out of position. I have stuff to deploy and nowhere to put it. Um, best spots are in Moncal, so I can move everything to Felucia and then move a detachment to Yavin. Uh, also, probably putting something in Coruscant and then Alderaan, too. So now is a good time to take a look at objectives. Uh, he is two points away from winning. I am one move to uh, Megiddo and then one move to Dantooine with a very limited pool of dudes there. Um, he's going to get a Mon Cal into the base unless he's in Felucia, which is very unlikely. And I can't deploy anything because I didn't run an R&D. So, um, I'm also very vulnerable to a sabotage on my Guido because I don't have, I mean, I'll need to double loyalty there and probably have to deal with Mothma on 3PO again. 3PO is a nightmare this game for me, and, I, and it's still up, just the threat of 3PO. All right, they've got Medine doubled up on a mission, which it's not covert ops because this isn't base deck. So it means it's it's got to be, um, he's probably going to recon plant explosives would be the most logical thing. Um, and then probably try to take out that ATAT. So I can do some damage here by trying to capture, um, I can try to capture a strength leader and limit the damage to plant explosives or I can try to grab a objective and then make sure he's not scoring this turn because if he scores the game's over so this needs to work perfectly for me it's gonna open here with a recon yep a recon grabbing plant explosives back and then I can't block that because if I block that, then I can't move the only troops I need to win the game with. Now, he could be in Yavin. Very unlikely. So I believe the correct move here is Death Star to Felucia. That threatens to cover whatever's left over in Yavin. And then also threatens to explode it if I, I need it. I can actually, I can't leave Moncal uncovered either. Uh, Leia running an infiltrate. There's no covert ops here, so. Um, Leia running an infiltrate. Then I need to make a decision about whether or not to cover Yavin with a assault carrier and troop or move everything to my Guido. And I make the decision to move a troop to Yavin. And this is got to be the wrong answer he's got i know he has hold them back so i wanted to get some value out of that stormtrooper because if i attack then i mean if i attack then he's going to kill the stormtrooper anyway so that gave me some some value there i did block the sabotage with tag which was nice um, I should be trying, I should use Piet to try to capture Tag right now, I think. We'll see. I mean, he's got Chewy, so I guess I don't really want more strength there. All right, Emperor's moving in. I got to win this fight here. <laughs> so don't, don't somehow lose to this one troop, this, this ATAT. Um... Blocking that sabotage was a big deal. I think probably the correct move was maybe Vader on subvert to block a sabotage there, and then Piet on capture, and just let the go without the the objective grab. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. I'm going to get something to build there, though, on my Guido, which feels nice. Instead, I had Ozzel on Subvert, and then I couldn't even afford to Subvert the Recon, so... I don't know. Alright, we'll pull Chewbacca out. No? Pull, yeah, pull Chewbacca out. 
Chewbacca out. It's going to improve my capture chances on Riken. He does have Wedge still, but maybe he'll maybe he'll plant him or move him. Oh, oh my goodness! And we've got to plan the assault in Cato, which I just put. Krent. Why did I pull Chewbacca out? To, well, I guess I. I don't know. <laughs> No reason to pull Chewie out there. I could have pulled him out anywhere, including like Tatooine, if I was worried about something else. So the only thing pulling him out to uh, Celeste did was just pin my fleet there. Um, okay. I'll play the flip the combat card because maybe that'll be used to, useful to me after I cycle. He uh, kills my guy. Oh, but I heal him. All right. All right. I like that. I'll block hits here. Doesn't do me any good. Um, okay, that was a lucky roll, Wombat. He will uh, flip the combat. I'll roll first. One heal. Doesn't do me any good. He'll roll twice and miss me both times. Okay, luck's holding up here. I would like to kill this White Wing is what I would like to do. I should play my TIE Fighter card to do that, I think. Mm, no, don't flip the combat back. Mm, I think there's better things to do. Yeah. Come on. No, don't do it. Don't do it! <sighs> Alright. Flip the combat back. He's gonna roll. Do a hit. I'm gonna roll. I didn't heal. I should've just killed it. That's alright. Okay, so Kato is free with a plan the assault so he can move to Kato now as well um, I have no moves left I would like to have some moves left um, I can't wait wedge out any longer so I have to try a capture so it's going to be a two on three capturing Riken imagine if I won that and then I could be going after I guess going after Mothma is not much better alright two on three need to get real lucky here Two dice, one. No, no, it didn't work. All right. Two only beats three if you're Leia blocking the Emperor. That's that's how that works. Doesn't ever work in your favor. And I wasted two moves. Subvert didn't go off. Man, that was a gross, gross turn. All right, now we're going to deploy stuff here. I have a massive amount of stuff to deploy. Um, that being said, none of it really does me any good. So he's got units in... Um, so what can he score? He's got units in Cato for potentially scoring major victory. So i got to be careful about what I put out there. He's going to try to kill three health worth of units. So i got to overstuff my space forces out there. And then I'll put an ATST and a troop in um, my Guido, which is my ground, uh, to try to absorb a... Um, a hit from uh, from plant explosives which he's got wedge I mean at least wedge has already used one in a million the last time he's got wedge and Medine on there and not Chewbacca and Chewie's back to play defense I think I think in a different world I put Chewie and wedge on there and then keep Medine back for defense but maybe it maybe it won't matter um, I'm gonna subvert and put both the Emperor and um, Krennic on Subvert. I can't afford to block Plant Explosives because he wins next turn and he's going to open with that. So I put him on Subvert to deal with whatever Leia and Jen were up to. And he rolls. He's going to roll four dice and he needs... Uh, I have six health worth of units there. Let's see. Four. Four health. So he can take the ATST in the troop, or the ATAT in the troop. He goes for the ATAT in the troop, and then he's got two guys in the base. Again, had I left, had I not gone to Yavin, I'd have one extra stormtrooper here, which could have made use of the stormtrooper card for sure. All right, he's got um, all his cards. And he's got um, <laughs> he's got a U-wing there, so he's gonna get a third trooper down. Ah, oh, gross. I guess I could have brought a tie interceptor instead of a 
instead of a um, instead of a stormtrooper, and then maybe use that to wipe the va one of the vanguards. I don't know. Instead, I'll capture. He's got Chewie back, so I guess that's the other thing. Could and I could have had Chewie to get one more one more dice roll in, and maybe he rolls a special with Chewie. I don't know. All right, I've got a overrun though, so I'll play that to do two damage. See how this works here. He's got two heals and a and a special dice, and he's going to do two damage to me. So the Yahtzee roll here would be a heal, and then a hit. Heal and a, a heal and a black hit. Crit. Not going to roll for Yahtzee. Let's just do it. Two. Two hits. Okay. Let's see. He needs a heal and he wins. Miss. And... Boom. Game over. Ha! Oh, 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 oh. Wowza. It's the comment in the chat down there. That came down to a single, a single hit. Could have been an extra hit on playing explosives. Could have... Man, I don't know. That was intense. Um, okay, objectives. He had defensive position... Uh, Death Star plans and I missed that third one I don't think it was um, don't think it was major victory otherwise that's what he could have gone for was major victory would have been the risk um, yeah I you know lots of little things to pick up here it was not a perfect game by any means um, several mistakes probably on both sides but the takeaway is, if you're playing the Rote deck as Empire, or if you are playing the Rote deck as Rebels, you have to be very careful. Yeah, it was Return of the Jedi. You have to be very careful on what missions you're using your troops on. Because the base deck gives you public uprising, incite rebellion, all those sort of things. Rote deck, you're stuck with what you make. And if you've got an Imperial who's playing tight, you can have limited troops. Anyway, uh, thanks to everybody for watching. Uh, I've got a good project coming up here in the next couple of months. So hopefully going to get some uh, different types of videos out here. Keep doing some more of the same too as well. Um, good luck to all you guys playing. If you have any questions, feel free to hit me up in Discord. The link's in the description. Uh, thanks so much, and I'll see you guys around.